today we are going to talk about volume spread analysis part two so as i mentioned in the webinar channel um it would be good if you guys looked at part one before today but if not you, you can look at that later um because part two is going to be solidifying a lot of the content that we discussed in part one so today we'll talk about market cycles bullish and bearish volume identifying strength and weakness and finally covering confirmations that can be used when looking for trade setups so institutions operate through cycles of accumulation and distribution as shown on this image so the length of these cycles can vary significantly uh, they can be seen across many major markets so the process begins with the accumulation phase this is the process of buying as much of an asset as possible without moving the price significantly until there is little left to buy at those prices. Usually this happens after a significant bear move or bear market. Once the selling has all dried up and enough of the asset has changed hands, the resistance to higher prices has now been removed. At this point, this is where a bull market can then take place. So here we are at the accumulation phase. And this is very much the beginning of the cycle where institutions are just accumulating the asset. Next, we have a spring. Now, the spring isn't always seen in the cycle. Um, it's worth mentioning because sometimes it does appear. So this is the opportunity for large players to hit other traders' stops and ultimately get a better long entry price. It's ultimately what they're trying to do here. As the stops of those that are long are hit, this increases the selling pressure, pushing the price down so they ultimately get a better entry price. Once that's complete, then they begin the markup phase. This is where prices are pushed higher to a stage where there is significant buying volume from the general market participants up to a range where they can start distributing. So the idea here is they will push the price high, so high that it will encourage other market participants, retail or just other participants generally to buy into it, to buy into the move higher. And ultimately what they're doing there is they're providing liquidity, liquidity for what will become the distribution phase, which comes next. So here, this is where institutions are looking to take profits from the accumulation phase. They may be looking to sell within a specified range, but obviously not looking to move prices too significantly at this stage. Once almost all inventory is sold towards the end of the distribution cycle, a new bear market can then begin. And ultimately that will happen because this move will then lack institutional support, right? So it's been held up here through the distribution phase after being marked up. It's allowed the institution to distribute the inventory, ultimately book some profits, and then they want to repeat the cycle. And they do that by pushing the price lower. There's no more institution supporting uh, the higher prices, and that enables it to reset um, and complete the markdown phase. Now, the reason why I mentioned this, it, I think it's an important concept to understand because it, it just stresses the importance of looking at the history of prices in any given market and zooming out. You know, as traders, we can very much be engrossed in our one hour time frame, two hour, four hour, whatever it might be. But just going back on the daily, weekly, monthly, depending on what chart it is, might give you an idea of what stage of this cycle we're in, which might actually give you a small edge in understanding, you know, what kind of setups might be best in this particular part of the cycle. OK, so here we've just got a, an example of the market cycle in Bitcoin. As you can see from the prices and where we are today, it's a bit of an old chart. Uh, but this is just a, a very clear ex example of what I've just shown. So here, after the, uh, the bear market, we've got uh, accumulation phase where the larger players absorbing that they're taken on stock. They mark up. Again, we have a distribution phase here where they're ultimately booking some profit. And then we see a markdown. Very similar thing. Now, you can see this quite regularly in, in cryptocurrency markets. And as I said before, the time frame varies, right? We're not always going to see it in the same kind of time scale. Could be days, could be weeks, could be months, could even be years, depending on which market you're in. But being able to identify this, I think it's really going to help those that are looking not only at trading with the VSA, but other types of strategies as well. Um, like anything, and I'll repeat this many times in this presentation, these aren't always obvious to spot, right? And what I'm showing you here are clear examples to really hit home the concepts. Um, but it's an important concept to understand, um, which hopefully will help you understand when you see it. 
Great. So if we can tell in which direction the larger players are trading, we can try to ensure that we are trading on the right size, right side of their trade and not against them. So by analyzing volume in the market, as well as the spread of the candle body, so that's the part between the open and close, we can determine whether there is institutional interest in higher or lower prices. Now we will look at how to identify bullish and bearish volume. So how to identify bullish volume? Now we touched on some, so hopefully a little bit of this will be familiar to some of you when we were looking at pullbacks and reversals. However, it's important that we learn to identify bullish and bearish volume in isolation, just to help solidify the concepts. So for bullish volume, for obvious reasons, you know, for a market to move up, we obviously need demand. We can sometimes see that demand on up moves where the current candle closes higher than the previous candle. That's how we define an up move. We just have a candle that closes above. The amount of volume attached to that move higher should be increasing, right? Bullish volume will have increasing volume on up moves and decreasing volume on down moves. So as we can see here, we have increasing volume and this we see this on the up moves. As the prices go higher, we see increased volume. In consolidation, we see volume reduce, it gets very low until the move higher continues again. And we see volume pick up and this should help us identify bullish volume. Okay, this is the kind of thing we're looking at. Again, relatively similar to part one, but just hitting home the concept. Um, the chart shows a healthy increase in volume on those areas we've seen. However, we do need to be careful if we see excessive volume, right? So that, this is ultra high volume. So on the indicator at the bottom, we can see the green, which is just average volume, the yellow, which is high volume. And sometimes you might see a red bar, which is ultra high volume. Ultra high volume is where we actually might be seeing supply into the market. So on prices, when they move higher, and we start to see red indicator on the on the VSA. Just we just need to be wary that potentially there's supply coming in, perhaps an area of resistance. So if we see red on on up moves, generally that wouldn't be bullish volume. So we'd be looking for for the yellow, which is high volume. Um, if you observe that volume is low on the market moves higher, you should be a little bit skeptical as to how genuine that move is. So the low volume shows that larger players are not participating in the up move potentially because they believe the market is already weak. So without the interest of larger players, obviously the move is unlikely to get very far. So being able to identify when the larger players or larger traders are, are wanting the price to go higher, we look out for the high bullish volume um, on those up moves to help give us that confirmation. And now with bearish volume, this is where we're going to see increasing volume on the down moves with decreasing volume on up moves. This is bearish volume. The signal to look for is pretty much the opposite to bullish volume. So again, on the down moves here, we can see high volume, high volume, high volume, lower volume on the pullback, and again, a higher volume as it continues lower. So there's institutional interest or larger player interest in lower prices, and identifying this bearish volume will help us realize when that's happening, just so we can ensure that we're trying to trade on the same direction as them, you know, not trying to going to long onto a pullback, for example. Again, as before, if you see an increase in volume that is excessive, so ultra high volume. So if we're around this level and we saw a big red candle, ultra high volume, we just want to be a bit wary that perhaps there's significant demand coming in, perhaps a change in direction that we want to keep an eye out for. So now we can also use VSA to determine whether the market is becoming weak or if there might be a sign of strength appearing by looking for two signals. So the first is no supply or no selling pressure. And the second is no demand or no buying pressure. These could help us potentially uh, with potential confirmations or trade setups, particularly around areas of strength or resistance. Let's begin by looking at a no selling pressure signal. So using VSA, we can try to recognize where selling pressure becomes exhausted at the bottom of moves to identify when an uptrend may occur. We can see these areas emerge in down bars or down moves. So if prices are dropping on volume that is less than the previous two candles. So if we look here, we see volume dropping, volume is less than the previous two candles, especially if the spreads are relatively narrow. So we look at the 
the spread of the candle body, relatively narrow, this could indicate that there is no selling pressure. So if you begin to notice volume reducing as the market moves lower, this is evidence that the amount of selling pressure is reducing, which kind of makes sense, right? The market may continue to fall, but be aware that it could quickly return and rise momentarily due to the lack of supply or resistance to any up moves. So like we see here, decreasing volume on down bars indicates there is no professional interest in, in lower prices. So again, um, we saw an area of low volume um, with narrow spreads and straight after we've seen a, a, quite a big price up. So usually when you get areas of no selling pressure, the market participants or the larger players do understand that. And that means that they can ultimately move the price in the other direction fairly quickly. There would be less resistance to higher prices. We could also try to recognize where demand becomes exhausted at the top of moves to help us identify when a downtrend may occur. And we can see these areas emerge on up bars or, or up moves. So what are we looking for? Here, we're looking um, for weakness to manifest itself on up bars when spreads are narrow with volume less than the previous two candles. So we've got spreads are narrow and the volume is less than the previous two candles. And we see that a few times here. We see volume come down, it's less than the previous two candles and we see a narrow spread. And we see that a few times. This shows that there is no demand from professional traders at these levels and then the move lower can continue. Um, generally, no demand is a little easier to pick out than, than no supply. Um, but again, being able to recognize when you see these is going to be important, particularly if you see range bound trading and you're looking to, to trade off of the support or resistance levels. The, understanding these little areas will, will help understand, will help you get a better understanding of where prices are ultimately wanting to go. Now we move on to confirmations. So once no demand or no supply signals have been identified in the market, we need to use a confirmation indicator that will give us some degree of confidence that the move we are expecting is about to begin. So although you may have identified your own confirmation indicators based on your own individual backtest that you've all done or are doing, here are two volume confirmations that could be used around areas of support and resistance. So you know, what we're not saying here is throw out your strategy and just use this. This is just to help you have some other knowledge on other concepts, other confirmations that you could use in and around your strategy. So the first one is looking for narrow spread down bars, which is generally going to be a long setup on greatly increased volume. So when we see volume levels of around high or ultra high. And the second one is a widespread up bar, again, another long setup on greatly increased volume. So we're looking for a high level on the, on the volume indicator. So let's look at, at an example of the first confirmation. Here on the right of the chart, we have an example of the, the first confirmation we just talked about. After this down move, we can see a narrow spread down candle on ultra high volume. So we see a relatively narrow spread body of the candle relative to its, to its high and low. So you always look at the body uh, spread relative to the high and low. And we also see very ultra high volume. So this is super high volume here. This is a clear indication that larger buyers have now stepped in at that level and absorbing a lot of the selling pressure and eventually pushing the price higher, right? So all this move lower, we saw volume reducing, reducing, getting lower and lower until we got to around this area where we see activity pick up, volume starts to pick up. And on this candle, this is the, the candle we're looking for, the confirmation we're looking for. We see the small spread of the candle, the relative to the high and low and the ultra high volume. And then you see a similar bit of activity in the next candle and it tends to start pushing the price higher. On the left, we also have another similar setup, but in the opposite direction, showing a narrow spread candle with high volume, right? So we've got the spread of the candle there relative to the high and low. So we can see that there's been a lot of activity, activity in this candle and between the high and low, and we see some high volume. So this shows that there's clearly been large sellers stepping in at this level. So after this move higher, we see a lot of sellers step in, and they've been fighting with the buyers. That's why we see high volume, a lot of activity, and ultimately it then moves in the other direction. So we've seen one for going short and one for going long here. And what's interesting to note is on this candle, if you look at the size of the volume relative to the volume next to the, can to the candle to the left, you can see the volume size is relatively similar, but the size of the body is very, very different. 
right? This is a very widespread body um, here. This is a very widespread body, and the other one is very narrow. So this should give you an indication that something different is happening compared to the previous candle that's worth your attention. Okay, the second more reliable confirmation we could use is the widespread candles on high or ultra high volume. This is shown in the shaded areas on this chart. So we can start to see volume pick up in the direction of the trend. We can use this as a confirmation that larger players are behind this move, pushing the price lower. The wide candle body spreads indicate that there is not much buying coming in, the down moves and uh, not much coming into the down moves, as you can see. So as it's a widespread candle with high volume, there's not much buying coming in. Otherwise, we'd see the body of the candle a lot smaller. As we see this repeat over and over, it gives us further confidence that this is a general direction that market participants are wanting the price to go. So in each of these shading areas, we see widespread candle bodies relative to the high and low, and we see high volume at each point. Now, this is a bit of a, I guess it gives you, it's a more reliable confirmation because what we're now waiting to see is the move in the direction that we want, right? Now, as long as we see significant room between a short entry point and the next level of support to justify the trade from a re reward to risk perspective, we can look to open short trades on the close of the high volume widespread candles with a stop above the previous high, right? So if we were to see this move, we'd wait for the candle to close. And then eventually, potentially we know we're around an area of resistance, Perhaps we look for a short entry. If we were to short here and put your stop above the previous high, quite a few times on this chart that would have worked out. Not every single time, but quite a few times. And as I said before, you know, things aren't always going to be this clear, but every now and again, they are going to pop out and you're going to notice them. So it's important that you understand these concepts or when they do appear. Clearly, institutions or larger players want the price to go lower. So, you know, looking at when the pullbacks ends and that confirmation of the move continuing might help you uh, with your trade setups there. So, VSA, a few things to consider. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the examples I've shown you are ideal scenarios. They're obviously from the real market, but they are very clear. And when you're trading, you're not always going to see um, examples that clearly. So, you know, you're not always going to see them at times as well. There'll be many times you'll be at resistance level and you won't be able to see any signal from a VSA perspective that you're looking for. And that's fine. You know, you're not always going to see it. But just for those times where you, you do notice it, you hopefully um, by using some of these techniques, you'll be able to understand how to trade it or what might be happening next. Um, and that brings us pretty much to the end of part two of, of VSA. And I think a good way to, to learn this or understand how it works is just with a small task, which I think some of you have done already, actually. Um, I think if, if you all go look on various different markets, it doesn't matter which market it is. It could be crypto, could be FX, commodities, whatever it is, and try and identify those confirmation areas we discussed in this webinar. So around areas of support or resistance. And if you share that into the trading channel and what we'll do, we'll go through them and I'll give you feedback on it. I think this would be a good way for you to try and see if you can identify them yourselves. Um, and as I said, it's not always easy to see it in, in all markets, but um, if you stick with it, you'll definitely find a few that we can give you feedback on.